Committee for Monday, May 6, 2024. In accordance with Board Policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Additionally, as a courtesy to the committee, I ask that you inform Ms. Faya or myself if you must leave the call by using the team's chat feature so that a quorum can be maintained. Ms. Faya, will you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Here. Ms. Hen? Mr. McMillian? Yes, here, present. Ms. Harvey? Present. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Will you now please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? Thank you. Dr. Melissa DiDonato? Present. Dr. Jess Grimm? Present. Mr. Chris Hartlove? Here. Mr. Homer McCall? Present. Ms. Valerie Holden? Present. Ms. Michelle Feeney? Present. Dr. April Lewis? Present. Ms. Bashira James? Present. Dr. Melissa Wistead? Present. Ms. Liz Becker? Present. Ms. Shannon Dawkins? Present. Ms. Jamie Hessler? Present. Ms. Michelle Stansberry? Present. Ms. Susan Stansberry? Present. Mr. Ryan Trexler? Present. Ms. Melanie Webster? Present. Ms. Sean Stahl? Present. Ms. Charlene Tolbert? Present. Ms. Laura Loff? Present. Thank you. If there are any additional staff participating that were not mentioned, please state your name now. Pete Dixit. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Faya. Thank you. So we will proceed with the meeting. Uh, staff has requested that item B, new business, contract awards, contract 26, RBE-801-24, Loyola Graduate Center lease, be added to the May 6, 2024 Buildings and Contracts meeting agenda. I will now entertain a motion that contract 26, RBE-801-24, <laughs> Loyola Graduate Center lease be added to the May 6, 2024 uh, Buildings and Contracts meeting agenda. So moved, Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? I'll second it, Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Ms. Faye, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. There, thank you. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contract 26 will be added. Okay, we're going to start with contract one. Uh, and for that, I will call on Mr. Hartlow. Good evening. Um, our first contract is JBO-724-20 Digital Content. content. Um, this is uh, simply an extension of the contract term by one, just one month, uh, changing or extending the contract end date to uh, June 30th of 2025. 
Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to contract number two. For that, I'll call on uh, Mr. Hartla. Yes, LLY-430-22, Equitable Services, Title I Tutoring. This is a change in scope and uh, an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Um, this contract will provide for continued tutoring services for students attending private schools in Baltimore County in grades K through 12 who reside in a Title I attendance area and require academic support. Approval is requested to increase the contract spending authority by 800,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $1,100,000. Uh, the volume of services has increased dramatically from year one uh, to year two and is expected to remain at a higher volume for the remainder of the contract duration. In addition, the need for cert uh, cert certified teachers also contributed to the increased cost of tutoring services. Are there any questions? I, I have a quick uh, clarification. This, this is grants funded. The yes, increase it, is grants funded. OK, and, yes, it's, and oh, I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove. Hmm. And, and the tutoring services are uh, solely for students who are in our Title I attendance areas, but are attending uh, private schools in the county. That is correct. OK. And we started out with 300,000 and we're anticipating that over the next, what period is it that we would be spending a five, uh, an increase of five, possibly an increase of $500,000 over the next three years? Contract uh, end date is September 30th, 2027. So it would be through that okay. date. Okay, okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? Okay, we will proceed with the next contract. Contract number three, Mr. Hartlove. Sure, uh, GDA-313-24 Printing of Student Handbooks. Uh, this is a new contract uh, for a term of five years and four months. It takes us through September 30th, 2029. Uh, the maximum contract spending authority is $675,000, and the contract will provide for printing and pack packaging of student handbooks. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Um, yes, LLY-400-23 physical examinations. Um, this is an increase in the maximum uh, contract spending authority. Uh, approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $400,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $900,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. Yes, JBO-716-22 substitutes and other temporary personnel, including virtual classrooms and offices. Uh, this is an extension of contract term and an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. Um, uh, we're extending by 10 months to May 4th, 2025. Um, the uh, uh, this contract modification will provide for continued substitute teachers and temporary employees. Approval is requested to extend the contract for 10 months and increase contract spending authority by $28 million in uh, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $78 million. And this is a uh, contract is with Kelly Educational Services. I will point out that we have uh, a, a, an error in the fiscal impact table you see the incre incre increase requested is uh, incorrect there. The increase should be 28 million, which is what's up in the uh, contract description. Are there any questions? Ms. Harvey, I have a question. Mr. Young, please proceed. Mr. Hartlove, the um, contract end date is set for May 4th. Yes. 
considering most schools end mid June, why terminate it that soon? That is a great question. And now that you have it, I have it as well. And there's Ms. Webster to answer it for us. Good evening, Mr. Young. The contract expiration date is based on the original contract, which is um, done by the Purchasing Cooperative of America. So we use their end date when we set ours. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any further questions? Uh, I have a question. This is Ms. Harvey. What is driving, I, I didn't quite read uh, in the description, what is driving the request for the spending increase for um, subs and temporary staff? Yes, the, uh, the, the increase really is because we're extending another 10 months, so we're going into next year. So um, that's that is the main reason um, this contract's relatively new to us, and uh, I think we're having pretty good experience with it. Uh, but we're still kind of uh, learning kind of how it uh, you know um, how it's working for us um, and trying to get a good handle on what's driving the costs. And uh, but because we're going into next year, we need we need uh, we need to bump up the dollar amount as well. And we're going into next year be contractually because because now this is the way we do our subs now. We, we as for subs instructional substitute teachers. Uh, uh, we now provide through Kelly Services, which is, that's a relatively. It's, well, this is I think that we'd be going into the third year of of doing this, and uh, so without it, we would not have substitutes. So this is a very important contract for us. I'm sorry, there's a long pause. I'm not sure if I asked my question yeah. <laughs> um, in a way that made sense. Um, Do, yeah, so I don't know if I answered. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, but I guess what, I'm asking why are we extending it as opposed to. Uh, well, I think that that goes back to the original contract that I guess we we. Um, oh, we we're using, um, and and Ms. Uh, Ms. Webster may be better uh, suited to answer the question, but it really we I think where we are with Kelly Services right now is is that I, I think we're we're liking uh, the the services we're getting generally. I'm sure we can find some some folks out there who maybe don't you know aren't as happy, but I think generally we're happy with the services and the fill rates that we're getting. And uh, so we want to continue with them. And it's not really something that you can jump in and jump out of fairly easily. So we're we're uh, committed to this way of doing business now. And we I think we uh, we like it. We're having some good success. Uh, some of these these folks are actually becoming teachers, uh, full full fledged teachers for us. So um, and they're filling. We have a good fill rate for our subs. So we're 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 uh, we're liking the the relationship that we have with Kelly, and we want to continue it. Okay, thank you. Are there any further questions? No, but Miss yeah. Harvey, this is Miss Hen. I've joined the meeting. Oh, thank you, Miss Hen. Thank please you. Please proceed with your question. Oh, I have no question. I'm just oh, wanting to let you know I joined mine. the meeting. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Faya, please note that on the record that Ms. Hen has joined the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hartlove, proceed with the next contract. Sure. Um, CWA-106-20, temporary staffing for accounting and uh, fiscal related positions. This is a change in scope and an increase in the maximum contract spending authority. This contract modification will provide for continued temporary staffing services for accounting and fiscal related positions. Additionally, this modification expands the scope of the contract to uh, include provisions, a provision of temporary staffing for the Division of Human Resources, primarily in support of the implementation of the system wide enterprise resource planning system. The maximum contract spending authority is increasing um, from $750,000 to $1,850,000 um, 
like I, like we like I said, uh, primarily uh, due to the uh, implementation of the ERP system. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Yes, CWA-121-24 Professional Auditing Services. This is a new contract that would uh, will take us through uh, May 31st, 2029. Uh, this contract will provide professional auditing services for the external audit of this system's financial statements and annual single audit of federal grants. Uh, BCPS will procure these goods under the Baltimore County Government Contract hashtag SCON-1000-2303. And this, uh, although this procurement was uh, was uh, led by the uh, Baltimore County Government, we did have participation on that. Uh, a couple of our staff members served um, on that committee. And um, so, uh, so we're going forward with a new with a new auditing services contract. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed with the next contract. Mr. Hartlove. Yes, NGO-416-24 Office Supplies and Products. This is a new contract for three years and one month that would take us through June 19th, 2027. Uh, this contract will provide office and general classroom supplies for all schools and offices. The maximum contract spending authority is $7,500,000. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. Yes, DEI-612-24 Food Service Equipment Supplies and Services. This is a nine-month contract that uh, takes us through February 28, 2025. Um, it's, uh, I think I said that already, it's a new contract. Contract will provide updated food service equipment for serving lines at selected schools. The vendor will uh, remove aging equipment and install new equipment. The maximum contract spending authority is $5 million. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow. Um, another contract in the food services area, uh, JHO-707-24 Smart Snack Foods and Beverages. This is a five-year contract, which will take us through May 31st, 2029. Um, this contract will provide smart snack compliant foods and beverages. Maximum contract spending authority is $10 million. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we will proceed to the next contract. And for that, I call on Mr. Dixit. So good afternoon. Uh, next contract is JBO-720. Dash 19 is for concrete and asphalt work. This request is to uh, extend the contract by three months with three awarded vendors approved by the board on May 7, 2019. There is no additional amount requested. This will give purchasing some time for a new solicitation. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. Next contract is JLE-618-20 for contracted services for boiler, general installation, repairs, inspection, and preventive maintenance. Uh, the request is to increase the spending authority by $2 million, bringing the revised total to $8,661,250 to the four contractors already approved by the board. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed to the next contract. Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is ASI-817-21. And this is for job order contracting. 
and the request is uh, to, to approve the contract in seven point five million dollars. A uh, little bit of what job order contracting is. It's a collaborative construction project delivery method. And it is a faster way of doing construction. We use it when there is no time for design uh, bid built process. And a lot of these projects are under the grant with tight timelines. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. So the next contract is um, a set of eight packages for the uh, addition at Dundalk High School. The board had already approved five packages uh, in the meeting of April 16th, 2024. Tonight, I'm requesting approval of the remaining eight packages. In the interest of time, I'll share contract number, uh, the, the trade of the package and the package number, number of bidders, lowest bidder's name, and the contract amount, which includes 10% contingency. So with that, the first, con first package here is a package 03A for concrete work. There were three bidders. Lowest bidder is Sodi Concrete. Construction Incorporated in the amount of $1,702,800. The second package is package 04A for masonry work. There's only one bidder, K. Ron Masonry of Maryland Incorporated. The bidder has done work with us before. The contract amount is $1,476,200. The third package is package 07A for roofing work. There are three bidders. City Roof Corporation is the lowest bidder with the amount of $1,091,087. The fourth package is package 08A for aluminum storefront. There are two bidders and the lowest bidder is engineered construction products limited in the amount of $2,033,460. The fifth package is package 09A for drywall work. There are three bidders and the lowest bidder is M3 Contracting LLC in the amount of $2,491,500. The next package is package 09B for flooring work. There is only one bidder, Apartment and Business Flooring System Incorporated with $1,101,661. The next package is package 09C for painting work. There are two bidders and the lowest bidder is JA Architectus Contracting Company Incorporated in the amount of $185,900. And the final package is package 23A for mechanical, plumbing, and sprinkler work. There were five bidders, and GE Tignal and Company is the lowest bidder with $4,845,500. We are requesting board's approval for all the eight packages, the lowest bidder for all the eight packages. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Mr. McMillian, I see you have a question. Please proceed. Thank you. Mr. Pete, so there's eight, eight packages today. There were five packages back in April, 13 packages. Do we have any more outstanding packages that need to come before us? Uh, it is my understanding that these are the final set of packages. Okay. Uh, secondly, do we have or are we nearing uh, a date for a groundbreaking? I don't have the date, but we can look into it and get back to you. Um, okay, please. Yeah. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract, Mr. Dixit. So the next contract is NGO-400. 
dash 24 for Dundalk Middle School. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anyone, so just give me a second. Uh, and I did not, so that's fine. So this contract is part of the capital improvement project that board has already approved. It is for chiller and cooling tower replacement at Dundalk Middle School. And there were nine bidders, Potapsco Mechanical LLC is the lowest bidder and the contract amount including contingency and to add alternate uh, is one million six hundred and ten thousand four hundred dollars. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit. The next contract is NTA-507-24, and this is for Randallstown High School Chiller and Cooling Tower Replacement. Uh, again, the, the project was approved as part of the Capital Improvement Program. There are seven bidders. Lowest bidder is Flowtron Contracting Incorporated with $2,285,800. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit. The next contract is NGO-414-24 for Stonely Elementary School drainage improve improvements. Uh, this is for the Stonely Elementary School and there are five bits received. Lowest bidder is general paving and contracting in the amount of $344,245. Are there any questions? Hearing none, we'll proceed with the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. So the next contract is an information item. Uh, number is MWE. Dash o eight o five dash twenty four. Uh, as the board will recall, that as part of the my I pass, uh, as part of the southeast high school strategy, Sparrows Point Middle School and High School were recommended uh, to look into different sites, which we have done. And as after evaluating all of the different options. The consensus is to use the existing site for the Sparrows Point campus, including two separate buildings housing the high school and middle school with some sharing of the site resources. A possibility is to use the property uh, adjoining that property known as Car Trust property for athletic fields and recreational uses, usages if necessary. The purpose of this exhibit is to let the board know that we are exploring the car trust property to be used for associated athletic fields for Squares Point Middle School and middle schools. Uh, and it's owned by the Baltimore County government, but any use of the site, the additional site, which is the car trust property, requires approval from the Chesapeake Bay critical area commission. And that's what we have been doing. We are in the process of doing uh, a preliminary design for the development of the high school and middle school campus, including site, will be shared with the board once it is completed. If there are any questions, we'll be glad to answer that. Yeah, Ms. Harvey. Mr. McMillian, please proceed. Mr. Pete, so has a preliminary design been submitted to the Chesapeake Bay critical areas yet? We are still working um, with the county to make the final uh, concept and submit it to them. So the answer is it has not been submitted. The work is in progress. OK, so approximately four or five, six months ago, you know, you and Dr. Grimm showed me four designs. Are you going to submit, pick one of those four designs? Or are you going to submit all four to the Chesapeake Bay critical 
area or are you going to pick one? What's the strategy there? So there are two things here. Uh, I just want to clarify that the the sketches, the plans that we shared with you, they were concepts, what we call them concepts. They're not designs and these concepts will be further developed to get into the design stage, but these concepts will be shared to get the to make an attempt to get the approval from the critical area commission that this is what these are the different concepts that we have considered. So no, the design has not been shared with them. When we get to that point, working with the county, we'll share the concept that we shared with you. And there may be more concept that might be developed as part of the process. We shared with you what was available to us at, the, at that time. OK, so theoretically, you know, if we use the number eight or excuse me, X, so X number of concepts are going to be submitted to the Chesapeake, Chesapeake Bay critical area and and they'll come back to us and say out of that X number, this number is feasible and then you can continue with your design on on these. Is that the way this is going to happen? We don't know the final part. We don't know how many concepts we'll submit to them. We are still working in finalizing the number of concepts. And once we share, the purpose of sharing concept is so that uh, Critical Area Commission knows the extent of uh, impervious and pervious, pervious area and the ranges of them. So this, this is very early stage, what we call pre-design, pre-planning, and the focus is to convince Critical Area Commission that we have a design that is not going to impact the site in a negative way. And okay. any future design will take a lot longer than that. And I, I don't need to remind you that you have said we're going to have a follow-up meeting in October of 2024. So you think at that point in time, we're going to have information back from the critical Bay Area and they're going to say you can you can take these concepts and continue working with them. You think that's going to happen by October? So that's our intent. Uh, but in any of these types of activity, we never have the definite timeline. We don't know what questions they will raise, what comments they will make, what additional information they'll request. But the part of this is to share with the board is that we are working with them that we are looking at different options. Mr. Pete, thank you very much for tolerating my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Uh, hearing no further questions, we'll move on to the next contract. Mr. Dixit, please. So the next contract is the one that we just added, and that's the Loyola lease. Um, I have with me, uh, Ms. Liz Becker, who will be able to answer more questions, but I'll share the background. So as you know, we have been looking for a site for a professional development activity that we have, and Loyola Graduate Center has been identified as one of the properties that we plan to lease, that we are in the process of developing a formal lease. The property location is 2034 Green Spring Drive, Lutherville, Maryland. And it contains a main building with approximately 64,800 square feet and an annex building containing 13,716 square feet. This lease space will pr provide a conducive environment necessary to facilitate professional learning activities and uh, advance the efficient and eff effective use of space within the BCPS portfolio. The lease is for three years, the proposed lease that we are requesting your approval on. The total amount of the lease is $4,310,000. It's for a period of three years. Uh, the approximate cost here is $15 per square feet with an annual escalation of 3%. Uh, base rent will be abated for the first month following full occupancy, which is August 2024. Uh, we are, BCPS is responsible for all costs with building maintenance, mechanical, electrical, 
plumbing system, maintenance, landscaping, janitorial service, uh, refuse collection, snow removal, and gas electric services. All the HVAC costs have to be paid by BCPS under the terms of the lease. And a maximum of $25,000 for major repairs. Anything after that will be considered capital improvement, and that will be done by a Loyola uh, uh, Graduate Center folks. There is no option to renew the lease. This, this lease is only for three years and the existing furniture and equipment will convey with the property. So that's the terms of the lease and brief description. If there are any questions, please let us know. Are there any questions? OK, I am hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Hartlove and Mr. Dixit for presenting uh, the information on the contracts. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 26 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Young. Thank you, Mr. Young. Is there a second? I'll second. Rod McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. The question is on the recommended approval of contracts 1 through 26 for board action. Ms. Faya, will you please call the roll? Thank you, Ms. Harvey. Mr. Young? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Ms. Harvey? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. There being four in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts 1 through 26 will be moved forward to the full board. Uh, prior to announcements, we do have one uh, additional item on the agenda, and that is follow up on our conversation from the last meeting uh, regarding the purpose measurements of effectiveness uh, of our committee. Uh, we have been asked by our chair to uh, have that discussion. And so uh, we I will open up the floor now uh, for just discussion on how we see the purpose of our committee uh, and how we measure our effectiveness. Ms. Harvey. Yes. This is Mr. Young. Similar to what uh, Mr. McMillan stated last meeting, um, this committee does provide a um, valuable service to the board. Um, so it, it should continue on. Um, what I struggle with is to really find um, valuable metrics or or worthwhile metrics really to say um, to define the success of the committee because just placing it at oh you know contracts the number of contracts is, is um, variable but i i do you know find the value in the committee thank you mr young does anyone have any uh input on our measures of effectiveness i i think it's pretty clear that we provide recommendations to the board on you know a multitude of contracts so, Ms. Can Hen, I have my hand raised, Ms. Harvey, oh, in case I'm you can't sorry. see it? <laughs> I did not see you, Ms. Hen. Please proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so, from an efficiency from an efficiency standpoint, this committee serves a very valuable role in that the discussions we have in committee, um, in vetting the contracts ahead of the full board meeting, um, serve a role and a purpose. And then it allows our full board meetings to be conducted even more efficiently. And for topics that the full board need to consider, it allows more time for those to be considered. So I know as a board member um, on committees that on which I don't serve, I rely on those members having vetted that information. Take curriculum, for instance. Um, those discussions happen in those committee meetings. Of course, I'm free to, you know, observe those meetings, listen in on those meetings. But the fact that the discussions happen um, 
in those committees outside of the full board meeting, that's a value add. And in terms of metrics, the time saved or the time allotted um, is a value add to have those discussions in committee. It's a, a less direct performance metric, but it's one that is is important because those are questions that we raise that are um, often not raised in committee because or in the full board meeting because we've had the discussions in committee. It's staff time um, and that they're they've prepared and are have answered the questions and have had the discussions with us in committee. So I would say the lack of redundancy, not to say that that's 100% of the time, but in a large instance, we, we are able to have those ahead of time. If board members have concerns, um, we're able to do that in advance, or they're able to come to committee and have those discussions in advance. Staff are able to prepare for them in advance. So I think that's one important measure of success. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Do we have any additional feedback regarding the committee? Uh, purpose, measures of effectiveness, or any other feedback that we'd like to provide? Okay, uh, thank you very much. I will convey that feedback to our chair this evening. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next Building and Contracts Committee meeting will be held on Monday, June 10th, 2024 at 5 p.m. Is there any additional business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you everyone for your participation and thank you for those who've joined us. Have a good evening, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.